Greetings, urban farmers, gardeners, and healthy food visionaries. Farmer Greg here, and welcome to the 554th episode of the Urban Farm Podcast, where every day we work together to educate and inspire you to become part of your food revolution. Do you know that there are many ways to water your garden? Want to explore what they are? I've got a free guide just for Urban Farm Podcast listeners that explores my favorite methods. We start with my epic full-length class called Wickedly Smart Water Harvesting, where I share the many ways that you can discover water in your yard. This class ends with the challenge to see how many water sources you can find on your property. Next, we'll dive into my favorite way to water my gardens. This method was introduced to me about a decade ago by my good friend and mentor, Scott Murray. It is water efficient, self-cleaning, and draws from what large farms have been using for decades. We boil it down to the backyard gardener level just for you. You think you can guess what it is? The guide also comes with a full description and list of supplies you'll need to install your own fully functional watering systems. Learn and harvest your free water, your garden guide at urbanfarmwater.com. Welcome, welcome, everybody. Greg Peterson coming to you from The Urban Farm. And today on our podcast, we have a really interesting thing we're going to be talking about. And I'm here with Janice. Hey, Janice. Hey, Greg. How you doing? Fantastic. For those of you that don't know of Janice, she's amazing. Uh, she came on board with our team about five years ago as an intern after she browbeat me into giving her an internship. And then I hired her as an assistant to help around with a few things and Pretty much since then, she's taken over and manages the whole whole I bunch of what we do. I my way to the top. Yeah, there you go. And you were actually interviewing me on a podcast. Didn't we do that? Wasn't that podcast number two? It was either 200 or 250 where you actually interviewed me about the urban farm and what we do here. So that was pretty cool. Today, what we're going to be talking about is our urban farm fruit tree education program. And this is a program that I started a few decades ago, and we do a fruit tree education launch every September. And so that's what I want to talk to you about today. And Janice is going to be here, and Janice has been running the program for a couple of years. So let's just jump in and talk. What do you got for me, Janice? You know, the world is changing. And <laughs> yeah, we... think <laughs> we live in strange times, that is for sure. You know, but the interesting thing about what we do about teaching people food system resilience is that applies to what we do at the urban farm and all of the other stuff that we do. We had to switch gears because nobody wants to be in a big room full of people right now. So with that, you and I kind of brainstormed and thought, what can we do to make sure we can still keep our fruit tree program running? And this is what we're talking about today. Yeah, so we actually, the usually it's the first Saturday of September every year. We do an event at a local church here. It's a 10,000 square foot room where we bring in speakers to teach how to successfully grow fruit trees. Well, up to this year, it's been specifically in Arizona, but we're going to cover some of that today. And with the whole COVID thing going on, we discovered that, well, it's probably not a good idea to put 500 to 1,000 people in a room in September. So we're actually taking the event online. So put on your calendars, Saturday, September 12th, no matter where you are in the world, we're going to be doing a live event that you can join us on. And while the event itself specifically speaks to fruit trees in the desert, what I've discovered over the past few years is that a lot of the techniques and structures that we've put in place for the success of your fruit trees, they work no matter where you are. You know, it's interesting, Greg. We've been teaching people how to grow food in the Southwest, specifically in this program. But you're right, this does go extend further out into the world. One important thing to consider is that the weather and the climate changes that are affecting so many areas means what is applicable for our fruit trees, not just the general stuff, but the Southwest specific is going to be expanding into further areas. Yeah. And the good news this year, Janice, is that the theme for the year is extreme plant care with an emphasis on healthy soil. Because mm-hmm. what, we've, what we've found over and over again is that the healthier your soil the healthier your plants are going to be. So we're going to be digging into that 
big time this year. <laughs> no pun intended. <laughs> I didn't even think about that. <laughs> Let's talk about our program itself so that for those people who are new to what we're doing, how did this even come about? Well, <laughs> kind of magically came about. It was the late 90s and a buddy of mine had a football size, a football field size backyard. Wow. And I said to him, Lynn, can I plant an orchard in your backyard? <laughs> you were nuts back then. Uh, Still are. Uh, thank you. I was going to say <laughs> back then only. And he was like all over it. And before I got done with my planning, I'd planted in my head 200 trees in his yard. That's not quite what he had in mind. He was more like in the 50 tree category. So we, we settled on 50 trees. And I went about trying to find the trees. Now, there are very specific rules that you need to follow when you're looking for trees for your area. And we're going to talk about those in a little while. And mm -hmm. I, I went out to start discovering what was going to work in the area here, what was going to actually work in the low desert. And one of the big things that I discovered was that you can go into most big box stores and some nurseries, and they will sell you a fruit tree that will never make fruit here in the desert. And the big box stores, they know that, a lot of them. And that just pissed me off. It's like, that is just wrong. So in my process of discovering that, I had to figure out how to find the right trees. And that's our first class that I gave. And that's really what you need to know before you purchase your tree. So back in 1999, I found no nurseries here locally that were interested in working with me to sell me 50 fruit trees. And I discovered Dave Wilson Nursery. I think I found them online. They're a big wholesaler of fruit trees out of Northern California. And I was recently there a few years ago and they had 20 million fruit trees planted. And standing on the top of a hill looking at 20 million fruit trees was a bit mind-blowing. And That's the word that came into my mind. Yeah. And so I discovered them back in 1999, and they said to me, we'd be more than happy to sell you trees wholesale. You got to buy 100. Well, remember, I only wanted 50, right? So I ordered my 100 trees that first year. I still have that order, by the way, and brought them in. So 50 with 50 to spare. Uh, exactly. I had 50 with 50 to spare, and those 50 to spare went in pots in my backyard. Well, some of them got planted here at the house, but they went in pots in my backyard. And pretty soon people were asking me, Greg, how do I grow fruit trees in my yard? Can you teach me? And oh, by the way, can I buy some fruit trees? So remember, that was 1999. That was the first year of my fruit tree education program. Everything that I do here at the Urban Farm is all about education. Education first, whether we're talking about seeds or online classes, it's all about how do we do this better. And so I got my, 50, my 100 trees in. 50 of them went into Lynn's yard. And 50 of them got distributed to my yard and the surrounding community. And that 1999 was my first year of giving classes. I used to give fruit tree classes in my living room. That's where this whole thing started. I'd have literally three or four people show up and I'd talk about growing fruit trees in the desert. So that's how it started. That is amazing. And I know that we'll go further into that and you'll share more about that in the future in our big kickoff that we're going to be talking about. You started this with your desire to grow fruit trees in Len's yard. And you've been taking notes for 20 years now. And that's what you put in the class. They things to know about what you buy before you buy your trees, right? Oh yeah. So what kind of things is, are we going to learn if you attend uh, a class about buying fruit trees? Yeah. So there's three major things that you need to know when you're wanting to plant a fruit tree. And the number one thing is chill hours. We happen to live in the low desert. We get about 350 hours of chill. And if you plant a fruit tree that requires more than 350 hours of chill, it is highly unlikely to impossible that you're going to get fruit off of it. And what I've discovered, and I've played with this a lot over the years, where I planted 400 hour, 450 hour trees, and we never get fruit. So chill hours is something you need to look into. If you're in the low desert, the max chill hours for a tree is about 350 hours. Now, if you're in Utah or Minnesota, the chill hours are gonna be different. So if you're in another area, you're gonna to have to discover the chill hours for your area. So that's number one. Number two 
is what rootstock is the tree on? Because often what will happen is these big box stores will buy 2,500 plum trees all on the same rootstock. And that particular rootstock may do very well in Seattle, Washington. But if it does well in Seattle, Washington, it is highly unlikely it's going to do well in Phoenix. So most fruit trees these days are grafted, which means they take a rootstock, which does particularly well under (laughs) circumstances. Thank you. And so for the desert, we have on our peach trees something called Nemagard. Nemagard is nematode resistant. It does well in dry, heavier soils. And... So being cognizant and learning about what the rootstocks are in your areas is really important that are going to do well. And then the third major thing that you need to know is when is the fruit ripe? So for us here in the desert, if you get a peach tree or an apple tree that ripens after about July 1st, the fruit will cook on the tree. I've seen it over and over and over again. So those are the three major considerations. What are your chill hours? What rootstocks do best in your area? And what is the right time for fruit to be ripening in your area? You know, I would love that we talk about that. And I, when I have conversations with people who, that come to our program or even just my neighbors, the idea that there are certain elements that are going to affect which variety and which rootstock is going to be a good fruit tree for your yard is mind blowing Mm -hmm. because it's once you get it in the ground, you're great if you've got the right one. But if you put the wrong one in the ground, you've got a challenge and a waste of time and energy. Right. I tell this to people all the time that you can experiment all you want with fruit trees and it's an experiment. It takes time, it takes money, it takes energy and hope to get this thing making fruit. So if you get it in the ground and it usually takes about three years to get fruit and in your fourth year, you're not getting any fruit, you just wasted the whole thing. It was just a total waste. So the reason I designed this fruit tree program was to give people the hope and really the guarantee that if they get one of our trees and put it in the ground, that they're going to get fruit in three or four years. So for our local people who are willing to come to our program and pick up their trees, we are giving them a massive head start on the research and the confidence on the trees they've selected. Yeah, absolutely. So now that we've picked the right trees, we know what to do to pick the trees. What's next? What do we teach them next? What's next is our theme this year, and that's extreme plant care. What do you need to do? in order to most successfully grow that tree. And one of the things that I've noticed is that we have just finished our hottest summer on record here in the desert. And I've seen that in how my trees are suffering. So what we're bringing you is a whole suite of things that you can do, whether you live in the desert or in Minnesota or in Ohio or wherever you are, to more successfully grow your fruit trees. And that starts with getting them planted. And what goes in the planting hole, there's very specific methodology for getting your tree planted. Especially here in the desert, we have dirt. And if you plant a tree in straight dirt, good luck with that. So what we suggest that people do is add 60% planting mix, 40% native soil, and add mycorrhiza, worm castings, and azomite into the wheelbarrow mix that up and plant your tree. That'll give your tree a nice jump start to get it through the first summer. So that is awesome. What is our program and how does it work? Oh, very good. First of all, starts with education. We will have, and I made up two new classes. Janice, I can see you right now. (laughs) I see you right on Zoom. She's rolling her eyes. I made up two brand new classes for this year. So I myself will be giving, I think, five different classes. And we offer these classes online. So wherever you are in the world, you can jump on and take one of our fruit tree program classes. If you are outside of Arizona, though, you cannot order fruit trees from us. You'll have to find them in your own area, but you can get your supplies from us, our planting kits and fertilizers and that kind of stuff. We should do ship Mm -hmm. all of that stuff. We don't, however, ship fruit trees, so you can't get them out of the state. But if you want to come here and pick them up, knock yourself out. And so the way that the program works is this year on September 12th, we will have a half day long online event where we're actually giving you all kinds of education about your fruit trees, how to be successful with them, 
we have got some amazing people coming on board. I've got at least three local people to come on and share about their successes and failures around fruit trees. We are bringing in Scott Murray, a friend of mine from San Diego County, who grows avocados. Former extraordinaire. Oh, amazingly. He grows avocados and coffee plants. He's recently started uh, planting coffee plants. And when you're planting those, they're high dollar crops and high dollar plants to purchase. You have to do extreme work to get them planted. So he's going to come on and share about the extreme systems that he uses to make sure that his trees thrive. And interestingly enough, he shared with me the other day, Janice, that these extreme systems that he's using are having his fruit produce faster and more fruit. No way. That's awesome. I always love when we have Scott helping us because he is such a great resource of information and you which is obvious because that's what he does as his other businesses. He helps farmers grow food. Right. So who else do we have? Oh, and then there's the guys from High Creations. These guys, <laughs> these guys are incredible, man. They have put together a system of foliar feeding. And what, Janice, what's your impression or what's your idea about what foliar feeding is? Well, I know that foliar has something to do with leaves. So, of course, I already know all this, but I believe that foliar feeding is having to feed through the leaves. Yeah, well, and interestingly enough, what I discovered in our conversations with them this year is not only foliar is for the leaves, but it's for the trunk, because one of the things that I thought was curious was that they had us foliar feeding when there were no leaves on the trees. Oh, I did that this year. I loved the results. Yeah, well, there you go. Oh, my goodness. They bud broke and my trees exploded yeah. beautifully. I loved being in my yard this spring. Yeah. It was amazing. So that really gives the trees a limb up when you're foliar <laughs> feeding. But also the foliar feeding can be used as a drench for the roots. Well, you know, we've been talking with them and we've been examining how to it most easily explain the foliar process and when and how and how much. And the five of us, four of us, with our general store manager, Ray, mm -hmm. are going to have this great program. What are we calling it this year? The Fruit Tree Nutritional Program. Oh, oh why didn't you tell me that? You guys, hold on here. <laughs> hold on here. Time out. You're over there making up stuff. Without me? What's up with that? <laughs> <laughs> you know, no, I'm excited it. because you've got them on board and they're going to be sharing this program and we're going to be having some very easy to understand graphics and it's going to take our regular fertilization program that we've been teaching you, excuse me, you've been teaching for decades, mm -hmm. I've been teaching for years, that it's going to take it to the next level and help people who are ready to really do that extra care to get the best results from their trees. And it really, really, really makes a difference. It's so important yeah. to fertilize your trees organically. 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 Because here's the thing. The single biggest thing that you can do, and you know, my longtime listeners know this, is grow healthy soil. And when you, because healthy soil is going to give you healthy plants and it's going to give you better tasting, more nutritionally dense food. When you use chemical fertilizers and chemicals on your trees and it gets down to the root zone, it is negatively impacting your soil health. Yeah, it's great in one area, but not so great in another. It creates an imbalance. Yeah. So organic only. And the cool thing that we've done this year is they have a, over the guys over at High Creations have a four part foliar feeding program, four mm -hmm. different products. And quite honestly, when Janice suggested bringing in anything but the fish emulsion, I balked at it, didn't I? You were you were so resistant. You had what you had was working. Right. And we had to have several conversations. And then finally you tried it yourself. And you weren't going to do it until you had a chance to try it yourself. Right. And the, the results have been amazing, number one. Mm -hmm. And people's reaction has been amazing. So yeah. this year we actually bundled all four of their products into a bundle. And when you... Yeah. When you basically you buy it's it's our famous buy three get one free thing. So mm -hmm. we're gonna give you a quart bottle of one of their foliar fertilizers when you buy the three. So just check out uh, store.urbanfarm.org 
and it'll be there. One of our bundles, it's going to be look up liquid under our store and you'll find all our liquid amendments, including our liquid combo. Excellent. Those guys at High Creations, Derek, Derek's and Anthony are going to be fabulous instructors. Nobody wants to miss this no matter where you are. But now that we've talked about fertilizing and I know that's going to be an important topic for almost anybody listening. What are we going to next? What's <laughs> our theme? Well, that we usually talk about extreme tree care. We already talked about what goes in the hole and now let's talk about the hole one. What's that? Now we're going to talk about the hole. Now we'll talk about the hole. And you know, I've been planting fruit trees here in the desert for over 40 years. I know I may not seem that old, but it's been <laughs> over 40 years that I've been planting fruit trees here. And sometimes a Mack truck hits me. And last year that's metaphorically, of course. Mm -hmm. And last year I saw a bunch of, information on the internet and videos about square holes. Now, I've been planting fruit trees in the valley for over 40 years, and it never occurred to me to make a square hole rather than a round hole. Well, we've been teaching for the longest time how not to use a spade to make your holes smooth, but this just took it to the next level. It did. So what can happen is when you're digging your hole, if you glaze the side with a with a auger spade. or a shovel or a spade, that can create a situation where the tree roots will not go outside of the hole and the tree roots actually get root bound in your planting hole. And last year it was circulating around, put a square hole in place. And it's like, I had, I smacked myself on the forehead and it's like, oh my God, of course, square holes. If you dig a square hole, make sure that the you rough up the sides of the hole. The tree roots won't grow in a circle that way. They'll grow to the end of the square, the corner, and then they'll keep growing out of the hole. So it is yet another method to make sure that your tree thrives is planted in square holes. Awesome. I think that's going to be really useful. And I know that we're going to go further in depth on that, have diagrams, pictures, tips, tricks, and examples. Yes. Right? Yes, absolutely. Right. You know, and, and we have an amazing customer membership portal when you buy from us. And you just buy something on our fruit tree program shopping cart and we'll add you and you'll get fruit tree videos, planting videos, fertilizing videos, all kinds of stuff. It's almost like having uh, Greg Peterson and the fruit tree crew in your back pocket. <laughs> oh, I like that. <laughs> I like that. You know, I, I just remembered we missed something. What did we miss? Tell me, I'll fix it. On the foliar part of this. And this came from our buddy Glenn, who helps us with our fruit tree program. And when you're foliar feeding, you get these little machine, you know, these little tanks that you pump up, put a gallon or two of water in them and put your foliar fertilizer in them and you pump it up. And they mm -hmm. have these little wands on the end that put this pitiful little amount of water out of the end. And it takes forever to foliar feed your trees because what you want to do is you want to actually spray that on the tree. So with your pump up sprayers and the mist sprayers that come off of the end, they're for fruit trees, they're virtually ruth worthless. Amen. So, so Glenn came to us. Glenn's a rock star. He's one of our, our buddies that were, helps us our with the fruit tree program. Awesome. Yeah. And he came to us with an attachment for the two gallon, one gallon and two gallon sprayers that changes out the wimpy sprayer for a hose end sprayer. And it works so well. So we actually have those on our shopping cart. It's really super simple to change out the end sprayer on your pump sprayer. So what do we call them, Janice? Mod kits. Our mod kits. So in our shopping cart, we have a mod kit. All right, they're less than $10. Yeah. And, you know, they come with the attachment. Both parts. What's that? It's a two-part kit. It's a two-part kit. You get both parts. So check that out as well, because that will change the way you foliar fertilize forever. Well, that leads me to my next question. Mm -hmm. You're just talking about our general store. I love our general store. Mm -hmm. So well, yeah, you would because you created it. I'm pointing <laughs> my finger at you now. Yes, yes, I know. But the problem is, well, no, I'm sorry. It's not a problem. The idea was to give more resources because that's mm -hmm. what we're all about. Well, resources, yeah. resources, resources for success. And we kept coming up with these great ideas, the great products, the people were asking us for references. So 
we got the general store and that's just Woo-hoo. a separate section in our fruit tree pro- cart. Yep. So are, do you want to talk about any of the products that we might have in that general store? Uh, well, given that that's your area, do you want to talk about any of the products <laughs> that are in the general store? Well, I'm going to let you talk about our soils products first, because that's the first thing that we have all our lot B, as I call it, for our big oh, bag yes. stuff. Yeah. What do we have on that? All right. Well, let's start with Woody Mulch. And for those of you that have been listening to the podcast for a while, you know how important that I think woody mulch is. And so we do sell it bagged, but we highly suggest if you need anything more than a half a truckload or so, get on to chipdrop.com. In fact, he was on our podcast recently. Check out him talking about chip drop and getting a lot of woody mulch for your area. So woody mulch is important. In fact, one of my key successes for planting and growing fruit trees is what I call my six, six rule, six inches of woody mulch, six foot diameter basin around your tree and grow the soil around your tree like it would in a forest. So that's the woody mulch. We have our farmer Greg's planting mix. That is a really nice mix of cocoa peat, compost, perlite that tanks has put together for us for fruit tree planting purposes. And then we carry bioflora fertilizers. We carry tanks fertilizers. We carry azomite, mycorrhiza, worm castings from Arizona Worm Farm. Most of this we don't ship, although the tree planting kits, that's the thing that's hard to find normally, which is the azomite, mycorrhiza, and worm castings. We can ship you tree planting kits. That's what goes in your hole. Because we portion it out and we actually call that a single portion is enough for one tree to start or we have our five portion bundle, which is great for five trees or a garden. You can put a five portion bundle, which is our multi tree bundle, put that into one single garden and this is a great resource to get your plants started off right. Absolutely. Mycorrhiza is life for the soil. Worm castings is worm poop, which is fertilizer in it plus life. And then the azomite is a mixture of like 70 different micronutrients for your plants. A to Z of minerals and micro... No. Something like that. A to Z of minerals, including trace <laughs> elements. There, there we go. There you go. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. And... <laughs> The cool thing is, is that when you're planting a tree, this product in the five mm-hmm. pack is $5 per tree. That's it. Yeah. So an easy little add on that just boosts and gives your tree the great start. You know, I've been talking to Scott the past few days. We're getting ready to record his presentation for the fruit tree launch day. And mm-hmm. I, we've always said no fertilizer in the hole because we don't want to burn the roots. What he told me that he likes to do is he likes to put a cup or two of fertilizer in the bottom of the hole. Well, since it's organic fertilizer. Exactly. Oh, that makes sense. So we're going to shift our talking about that. This is the thing about our program is once we learn something new, I'll admit that, okay, that's not quite the way to do it. This is a better way to do it. We're always looking for better ways. Well, that's the important thing that we do is we share what we learn, but we have amazing resources with our grower, with um, our uh, professional farmers, with uh, our successful uh, urban farmers, all of these resources that we have, we're pulling that information together and bringing it at easy access for our customers. Yeah. On the customer our friends, portal. actually, our, our fr- customers are more yeah. than customers. They're yeah, friends. that's true. People come back year after year after year. I have people that have been buying from me f- through this program for over twenty years, which is I cool. love it. Which is I cool. love it. Well, you know, last year or two years ago, we did a fruit calculation of how much fruit from the because we've sold in the past twenty years, we've sold well over fifty thousand fruit trees, and I did. You know, I assumed that we lost. 40% of them or something like that. I did all this Some in the high number to be conservatively applying everything. Yes, exactly. And it, it was like 4 million pounds of fruit that they would have grown over the past 20, 20 years in the Phoenix area. That's enough to transform fruit growing in Phoenix, which is my game. Yeah, it has been your game for a long time. Now, our, and our general store has a lot else to offer besides fertilizers and soils. We've got water devices and tools, Um, which include our moisture meters and soil probes. We've got irrigation supplies, which is our whole drip tape line and unsupplies. 
we've got foliar feeding focused category, we've got granular feeding focused category, we've got some pest control, organic pest control, um, we've got our references, we've got biocompatible soaps, we've got personalized support. Oh, you know, you need to talk about that. That's where somebody can access Greg Peterson and get an individual what? phone call. Oh, right. We have our uh, garden consult that I do with people. Our garden and, and fruit tree consult. You know yes. what's happened recently that I'm very excited about is we brought Scott Murray on mm -hmm. to do farm consults. Mm -hmm. So if you're interested in starting a farm, we have a farmer consultant that can work with you as well. So Yeah, that's so cool. We're going to have more about that in a whole different podcast, but that's your teaser, folks. <laughs> more to come. So let's talk about our tree guarantee mm. and how that came about. Well, you've been, doing, you've been saying this for a long time that what you're doing is going to give somebody success and you created a guarantee about it. So tell us. So three or four years ago, we decided to guarantee our fruit trees. And the way the guarantee works is if you take our education and follow our directions. So we do everything that we can to guarantee your success. You just have to listen and take it and do stuff with it. So mm -hmm. if you buy a tree from us and plant it and it starts struggling, you need to contact us. You communicate us with us with uh, pictures and saying what's going on so that we can figure out up front what's happening with the tree. And often we're able to fix it before the tree dies. But if the tree does pass away, what we've done is we guarantee the tree and it's a, it's a little bit of a unique guarantee. Basically what we do is replace the tree at 50% of the cost. And you may say, well, what kind of guarantee is that? And I, I say, the guarantee is that we have done on our end everything that we can to get you trained to do this correctly. We've been there for you at every turn. If there's a problem with the tree, we're there to help decipher what's going on. And then if the tree doesn't make it, we'll replace it at 50% of the cost. That way you're responsible for your part and we're responsible for our part. And it's really nobody's fault that the tree died, especially when we're working like that. Yeah. So you had a you had a note that you were holding up for me, Janice. What was that about? Well, for more information on our guarantee, they can find it at fruittrees.org under our about tab. And they can find our link to our guarantee. Excellent. So the fruit tree education program is for anybody. Anybody that wants to tune in, we have our launch on September 12th. Definitely want to come for that. There are at least four or five other classes that we're going to be offering online throughout the course of the fall, multiple times. Usually we do one or two classes a week from September to December to teach our success strategies. And specifically, if you want to buy fruit trees from us, you have to live in the Phoenix metropolitan or the desert Southwest. Some people come up from Tucson. If you want to get supplies from us, knock yourself out. We have a shopping cart full of supplies. And the trees that we supply locally here are the ones that we know work. I have proved them over and over and over again over the past 40 years that these are the trees that work. The cool thing is, is that we have a program for everybody out there that is interested in growing fruit trees that aren't on our list. It's our special order fruit tree program. We have available a list of... I don't know, a thousand probably varieties of trees. We bring in maybe 40 varieties because those mm -hmm. are the ones that do really, really, really well here. But if you are wanting to experiment, you can order through our special order fruit tree program. It's on our web website at fruittrees.org. You can find it there and you can, you know, virtually get any kind of fruit tree you want. This is cool because this is for the individuals who are ready to take the next step. They're not starting out. They don't have just one space for one or two trees in their corner. They want to do a little bit more and expand into additional trees and be creative with what they have to offer. But they've built the microclimate. They've got the soil knowledge. They're ready to take the next step. So if they're ready to take the next step, we've got some options for them. You jump in. Absolutely. So... What do we do next? <laughs> so as always, with what we do here, education comes first. Take a class. Go to fruittrees.org. On the front page, there's a place to sign up for our fruit tree education launch. 
that will interestingly be coming from the yoga studio here at the house when the whole COVID <laughs> thing went down in March. My sweetheart, Heidi, who is a yoga teacher, converted our extra bedroom into a yoga studio where she broadcasts from. Well, that's where we're going to be broadcasting from for the Fruit Tree Education Progr Day program. So sign up for that. You'll see my pretty face. You'll see Janice's pretty face on the screen when we're uh, broadcasting because it'll be on Zoom and probably on Facebook Live as well. And so definitely sign up for that. Additionally, from there... And it's free. And it's free. All of our fruit tree education is free. I do all that. All of it? All of it. I do that on purpose because I am so incredibly committed to people growing healthy, happy, fun fruit trees. And you know, successful. that's the whole thing is you have been committed. Our team is now committed. Everybody's committed to the success of anybody who buys a fruit tree from us. Just don't commit me in my, in my crazy ideas. <laughs> that's a whole another discussion. <laughs> so then let's see, let me see if I can recall the classes. So some of the classes that I will be offering multiple times this fall are, here's what you need to know before you buy your fruit tree. Here's what you need to know after you buy your fruit tree to get it in the ground. We have a planting, watering, and fertilizing webinar that we're going to be doing. I think one of the ones that we're doing, oh, if I say it here, I have to create it. I think one of the ones we're doing is Greg's favorite fruit trees, right? Mm, you've been talking about that one. Yeah. I'd like to do one too. I have an idea. Uh oh. I want to do one on how to use a moisture meter, how to use a soil probe, and how to monitor the water in your soil. That's huge. That's huge because, and we, you know what, we can actually make that part of planting, watering, and fertilizing. Mm -hmm. you, yeah, perfect. All right. So that's really what there is to do next is to take a class. Take a class, get excited about what fruit trees. You know, I get this question a lot from people over the years. What kind of fruit tree should I plant? There's two answers to that. First of all, what kind of fruit trees thrive in your area? Secondly, what do you love to eat? So I have, and people think I'm crazy, but I have, I have almost 80 fruit trees in the yard here at the Urban Farm. And of those 80 fruit trees, I have 15 different, I have 15 navel oranges of three different varieties. And yes, you are definitely crazy. People say to me, what do you do with all that fruit? And I say, well, on a good year, I get enough to share with my mom. <laughs> Here's the thing. Citrus is cool. It has to grow in, you know, in a warmer area, but citrus is cool because it's on the tree from November here in the low desert to April. So November, December, January, February, March, April, I get four to six months of citrus fruits off of my trees. When the navel oranges are in season, I am eating five to eight of them a day and I eat most of what I produce here. Wow. So yeah, yeah, it's really that cool. You know, every time I see you during the summer, during the um, winter, when you have brought stuff to the lot, it's usually citrus. Now and I actually, think? that's not true. There is a time period where you are antsy <laughs> with anticipation and bouncing, ready to start eating the citrus that you've been waiting for. You know, my three favorite days of the year. What's that? First day of citrus. Uh -huh. First day of apricots. <laughs> And first day of watermelons. Yes. And I work with you on that one. <laughs> All right. So what's next? Well, now they take in the classes. Take your classes. Uh, if you live in uh, within driving distance of Phoenix and want to order fruit trees from us, order fruit trees on our shopping cart. And the way the program works is you pre-order your trees and then they arrive in January. So you would come to our pop-up nursery. We're only open about 20 days a year and pick up your fruit trees in January and early February. We have not decided what we're doing with citrus at this point. There's a bunch of stuff going on about that. And so take a class, pre-order your trees. You can pre-order your supplements and that kind of stuff. If you're just ordering supplements and stuff of our, off of our shopping cart, you can order it direct and we'll ship it direct to you and we can do that now. And uh, we do have our early bird special, our bundles that are all ready and available in our shopping cart now and are available through no, the first weekend of November. 
Yeah, because we set up our ordering in seasons. We have three basic seasons. The early bird season is the season that allows us to place our order properly with our grower. And in order to make that work, we've got the best deals on our cart. And that includes our early bird bundles. The reason I created early bird bundles was that it's called in backyard orchard culture, it's called successive ripening. So in backyard orchard culture, and we don't have a lot of time for this because I want to wrap up, but in backyard orchard culture, we try and keep our trees small. A standard size peach tree can easily be 40 feet tall and 30 feet wide. The fruit at the top, in our yards, the fruit at the top of that tree is bird food. So we like to keep our trees no taller than about eight or nine feet. We can pick them from the ground and put them closer together so that our bundles often are called successive ripening bundles. So the peaches bundle that we sell has a mid-May peach, a mid-June peach, and an end of June peach so that you get 50 pounds each time and your harvest is spread out over six, eight weeks. That is awesome. And yes, we have some great ordering time now, but why... Do, why is anybody interested in joining us on the 12th? Uh, first of all, the presentations we're doing are going to be in 8 to 15 minute bites. And so it's going to be dense, quick information. Love it. And we're going to have all kinds of giveaways. Mm -hmm. So you can come on down. Join us. We'll be giving away uh, ba Dave Wilson baseball hats, I'll bet. We've got some How to Prune Your Fruit Tree books. We've got all kinds of giveaways and lots of education. Now we know what's going to happen. How does somebody sign up to participate? Ah, so the best thing you can do is go to fruittrees.org and sign up. On the front page there, there's a button that says Fruit Tree Program Launch Extravaganza or something like that. And join us on September 12th live from the urban farm where we're talking all about fruit trees and we're, we're going to share with you all the pertinent things you need to know to successfully grow fruit trees in your yard. Come join us. Be part of our program. Yay. Thank you for joining us today and see you on the 12th. We hope you enjoyed today's episode of the Urban Farm Podcast. Remember to listen for tips, advice, and resources to help you on your journey with urban farming. You can find us on the web at urbanfarm.org or send us an email to podcast at urbanfarm.org. In the words of Vincent Van Gogh, great things are done by a series of small things brought together. Be encouraged that with each lesson learned and skill developed, you are one step closer in the direction of your dreams.